Hello, good morning and welcome everybody to All Hallows Catholic High School. Uh, you join us this morning in our Year 11 Centre, which is very uncommon for any of our transition events because we're normally sat packed together in the Arts Theatre. But of course these are very unprecedented times. This isn't the method that we would choose at All Hallows to welcome you to our school. But I think it's, uh, it's necessary at this time. So what you're going to get is a virtual uh, welcome. A virtual transition event and I'm joined this morning by my colleagues Mrs Hall and Mrs Washington from whom you'll hear in a few minutes. Um, the school, I'm sure you chose our school because of the reputation of the school, of our deep-rooted Catholic values and the traditions upon which the school is built and of course one of those traditions is a warm welcome and this doesn't feel that way. We would have loved to have been sitting there in the Arts Theatre it's one of the highlights of the year actually because all of the fraughtness of the appeals processes are over and the applications are all processed and you become members of our community. But what I can reassure you of is that when we are finally back and all together at All Hallows we will be looking after your children who are in year six at the moment because we know that even under normal circumstances transition is difficult and we're ready to receive them and to try and settle them into school, whatever that might look like in September, and more information about that will come to you. You are also going to receive our pack of information, the transition booklet, and that's going to come to you um, via an email, and we're going to require a reply to that as well, and all the details will come to you in that email, so you can look forward to receiving that. So what we're going to do this morning is take you through our normal presentation that we give for transition. Um, and of course the slides refer to normal times and we might have to get used to a new normal in September. And that's what I'll try to do. I'll explain how some of these um, differences might appear to you and your children when you come in September. So I'll start the presentation. Normally we talk about setting of pupils. And it's a straightforward system. You can see the way that the groupings are put together on the slide here at the side of me. However, things are going to probably be different this year because the, the kind of data that we're used to receiving from primary schools is going to be slightly different. And we will give you more information on how we're going to group the pupils when they come in, when we know better the kinds of information that we can act upon uh, when it comes from the primary schools. And of course, how we may have to adapt the sizes of classes dependent on the advice we get from the local authority and the government on social distancing. What I can assure you of is any um, system that we put in place will have been um, closely risk assessed and that everybody will be as safe as we can make them with all the social distancing measures put in place uh, for your children. Our curriculum under normal circumstances is something that we're very proud of because it's rich, it's diverse, it's broad and your children get um, this experience in year seven when they join us. And again, I keep having to emphasise under normal circumstances. If there's any change to the shape of this curriculum, of course, we will give you uh, information on that. So you can see that all the core subjects are there. and. We, we have a breadth of curriculum because we believe in the education of the whole child. So you can see that there are elements of technology, art, drama, all kinds of different experiences for the children when they come to us at All Hallows. And at the bottom of the slide you can see reference to personal development because again we have a commitment to the education of um, social, moral, cultural aspects uh, of, your, of your children's upbringing as well. This is a typical timetable. Um, it looks confusing, of course, to a new year seven as they come in, but what we do is we give them some time with form teachers on day one, and they go through the timetable. They look at what the various codes mean, um, the initials of staff, the rooming, and they very quickly get used to following a timetable, which for them is very different, of course, because they're used to being static in a room in primary school, and they'll be moving from class to class but we reassure them of how that system works and we take them through that on day one when they join us. But what we do pride ourselves on at All Hallows is our academic progress and we want to get the children into the swing of learning as quickly as possible. 
So once they've had some time in their forms on day one, we get into lessons after break time, we get them used to following that timetable. As you can see from the slide at the side of me here, they're working away uh, in their art classes and other classes as soon as we can get them going. I won't dwell too much on the information about the wider aspects of school life because Mrs Hall in her section will talk to you uh, in much more depth. Just really to reassure you that the school has a rich curriculum but it has a rich wider curriculum as well. We really believe in the benefits of children being involved in uh, spiritual activities, residentials and other residential trips as well. So you can see here we have the Year 7 Retreat Programme for our Year 7 pupils. Um, many events during the week, uh, quiet time, reflection time, as I said Mrs Hall will talk to you a little bit more about that. The end of our first half term though, we, we normally have a Year, year 7 Massive Welcome. It's a, a brilliant event because it marks the end really of the first stage of transition for the pupils at school. It's the point where they feel fully integrated to the, to the school community and it's a great event that we can bring together normally parents, grandparents, and we have a lovely massive welcome at the end of that first half term. Again, if there's any change to that due to the kind of guidance we'll be given, then we'll pass that on to you as soon as possible. Performing arts um, figures heavily at All Hallows, and we know that we'll be having any number of gifted singers and dancers coming to us this year. Um, what we like to put on is a talent show at the end of Year 7 and that will be led by Mrs Coulthoff, our Head of Performing Arts. Uh, again, a real highlight of the Year 7 programme. We like to keep you um, updated as often as we possibly can. There are many ways that we communicate with you, parent mail being the main one. Um, but as you can see from the programme behind me, there are a number of um, anchor points in the year in which we try to give you as much information as possible. Um, taking you through from September when there's the information evening, again that will be under review under current circumstances. Um, reports go home in November, January more reporting and a chance to meet teachers in the parents evening. And in April a third report home um, and in July the full uh, school report goes home. And again I have to keep emphasising under normal circumstances and hopefully we'll be back to normal as much as possible by the end of the uh, next academic year. So that concludes uh, my part of the presentation. I'm going to hand over now to um, one of our senior leaders, Mrs Washington, who's in charge of pastoral care and safeguarding in the school. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mrs Washington. Um, and as Mr Harriet said, I am one of the assistant head teachers at All Hallows. My primary role is to look after pastoral care. And part of that is looking after the transition process. Um, another interesting part is actually I'm also a year six parent, so my little girl currently is at St Teresa's and some of the questions that she's asking me and some of the questions that you're probably asking yourselves and each other, they're always going through my mind, so hopefully um, the next few slides will address some of those. In addition, myself and Mrs Hall are also planning on doing a similar video to this um, for the year six children, um, just looking at sort of questions and issues that they might be worried about that we're able to answer them and, and give that out to the primary schools to distribute so that one will be with you probably in the next couple of weeks or so. So one of the things really that, that probably you're thinking about is uniform because that's one of the most exciting things isn't it, getting the uniform and getting them there on the first day of year 7 picture. Again in these times the uniform shops are not currently open um, but I have been in email contact with both our uniform shops, so that's just in Pemberton and also the Delta Wall shops which are in Lothstock Hall and Farrington and New Longton. They are both offering um, a click and collect service at the moment. So if you just go on online, look at the websites, they can give you all the, um, the prices and the information about the uniform. So don't worry about that. Now, in terms of the actual specifics, all the uniform details are actually in the booklet that we're going to be emailing out. But you can see here, uh, our youngsters are in the winter uniform. So they come back in September um, the girls are allowed to wear a white knee length sock and blazers are optional up until October half term. Once October half term kicks in, after then we do ask for blazers and for the girls for the uh, 40 plus denier tights. So you can see there, um, 
very similar apart from that the chaps are in a tie whereas the girls are in an open neck shirt. Moving on to PE, again all the details are in the booklet um, but the PE uniform is quite similar. There are options for girls and boys so obviously we have the option of a, a skirt for the girls. Again shorts are still an option for the girls if they want to choose those instead and we've got the um, optional tracksuit tops if they want to buy those as well and then the optional leggings or tracksuit bottoms. The wool shop and just a really good advising on size and anything to do with that quality so you can uh, just go in and ask them or email them online. The second thing I want to talk about is probably very pertinent at the moment because I know my daughter's certainly been spending more time online talking to her pals. What we say at All Hallows is if you can get your, your youngsters into really sensible habits from the start, it's going to help when they get to high school in things like time management, staying safe and having some really good positive relationships online. So these websites are all ones that you can look at now actually to give you certain guidelines about certain websites and what's suitable and what isn't. Um, Childline is actually really useful because that gives a breakdown of different ways of keeping safe online. So just how you can monitor their online activity, how you can check that they are staying safe and you can check on certain websites and, and maybe age limitations that maybe they could have. Um, again, Think You Know is a, a really useful one. I know that a lot of them are wanting to go on TikTok and, and things like that. That is actually a, a, an age restriction of 13. Um, and websites like this tell you certain information about that and how you can put restrictions on certain websites to make them safer for your son or daughter. And then finally, this is something that's more child friendly. So the NSPCC website gives you certain updates on apps because obviously apps are coming out all the time and quite often the young people are faster than we are at working out what the latest cool thing is. This gives you the latest updates on certain apps and what the logistics are about keeping safe with those. And finally from me is buses. Now again, this is a big question, isn't it? We're not entirely sure what's going to happen um, in terms of school transport. I would just suggest at the moment you follow government guidelines on that and, and just check out what the latest is because that's what school will be doing. But just to give you the normal picture, we do have five school buses and they pick up from as far as Southport in that direction, um, Lostock Hall, Bamber Bridge, um, and also coming through Leyland. So we have got five services. In terms of how equipped they are, that's the standard press and bus we've got there. Most of them are double deckers, although we do have a single decker. Um, all buses have bus prefects on, so those are pupils from year 10 and year 11 who are directly reportable to me. So they check out the behaviour on the buses and quash any poor behaviour if there is any, and then they report that behaviour to me and I, I deal with that in school. We're very lucky, we have very loyal bus drivers who um, very, very seldom report poor behaviour on the buses. Um, and they have been with us for several years because the, the standards of our behaviour on buses is excellent, they say. They also have CCTV for your assurances, so if something does happen, I'm able to view that and very quickly deal with what's ever happened appropriately. Um, in terms of bus passes, they are super expensive, they are going up every year. Um, I can't give you an exact price, but if you go to the website there, the lancashire.gov.uk website, that will give you all the up-to-date information on bus passes, bus routes, timetables and things like that. In terms of uh, buying a bus pass, it's really up to you what you want to do. Quite often, um, you might find that if you do buy one, then in September some of the young people might start doing after-school activities, so you find out that you're not actually getting that home journey cost. Um, what you can do is be a paying customer, so you might want to see what it's like for the first few weeks, get them to pay, and then if you think a bus pass is going to be worth your while, then um, you, you could go on the website and, and look into that in a little bit more detail. Um, I'm going to hand over to Mrs Hall in a second, but what we are actually going to do is, usually at the end of this presentation we would take questions, obviously that's not appropriate today, but we are going to put my email address and Mrs Hall's email address onto it so that if you do have any queries or worries you can contact us direct and we'll get back to you uh, pretty quickly with answers. Okay so take care and hope to see you soon.
Good morning. Um, so I'm Mrs Hall, Head of Year 7, and I'm going to talk you through a few more parts of the, the transition process. So as Mr Horrocks spoke about earlier, we do hopefully lots of trips um, as the year progresses. We, we do lots of retreats, lots of getting to know you, games and, and trips for the children, particularly who come from non-feeder schools, uh, to help them settle. And hopefully as the year goes on, sometimes we do a French trip, uh, we do a rewards trip at the end of year seven, so there's lots for them to, to look forward to. Um, in terms of the team that will be looking after them, there's myself um, and my assistant uh, learning manager, Mrs Donoghue, and then we've got a team of six form tutors who are all well practiced at, at looking after year sixes and answering any questions that, that they might think are, are really small, um, they're, they're well used to answering questions like that. We've got teaching assistants in the first few days as they're settling to help them as well with things like lockers and pencil cases and getting set up with all their equipment and hopefully 180 pupils as well. Um, so there's myself and Mrs Donoghue, that's this year's form tutors. Um, there are six form groups in total um, and they'll meet every morning, Tuesday to Friday. Monday we have an assembly, so we all meet as a year group. Again, hopefully that will be happening from September. Um, uh, but they'll, they'll meet their form tutor every morning. So that's a really important time for them to be able to ask any questions or mention anything that's worrying them. And the tutor, like I say, will be really well practised and, and really familiar with the sorts of questions that year six will have. Um, one lesson per week, as Mr Horrocks said before, is for personal development and often they are taught by, for year seven, they're taught by form tutors so that might be another opportunity for them to get to know their form tutor a little bit better. So here's the school diary, if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's probably the most important thing that the pupils will be given. Um, it, it should keep them, if they use it properly and well, it should keep them really well organised and make sure that they're on top of the homework. But it's also really important for communication between me and home and their teachers and home and their form tutor and home. So um, if you see where this red arrow is, that's where you can write notes in if there's anything you need to let the form tutor know or myself. Um, but it's also where you'll see things like red writings, green writings and gold writings and I'll talk a little bit more about those later. Um, at the bottom here, um, there's space for a signature from you and their form tutor. And we ask that their diary is signed every week by you and it's really important that it is seen by a parent at home just so that you know that they're getting enough homework, that they're doing the homework, that if there's any sort of issue going on in school or in a particular lesson that will be communicated by their school diary. So if you can, obviously we're in assembly Monday, if you can sign their diary over the weekend or Monday evening, we'll check it on a Tuesday. If it's not signed, they get one more chance. If it's not signed by Wednesday, they then do a lunchtime detention. And that, we, we, we start pretty quickly with that because it's just about getting them into really good habits of, of them bringing their diary to you and you having a little look in there. So um, we give them a couple of weeks to settle and then we start in with that. Um, this is what a good diary should look like. Um, plenty of homework in there. They'll get at least two to three pieces um, a day. And if you can see down the side, they just write the subject, a quick description of the task, and then they've got a date that it's due, and then the, the box to say that it's been done. And you can see in this one here in the comments section, there's uh, green writings there, um, which are a sign of something positive, which I'll talk about in a second. So, things you can do at home to be helping. Um, in the beginning, organisation. It's, it's a real, real change for them from primary school where often their books are all kept in school and suddenly they've got to bring everything home and then back to school again every day. So um, packing the bag can be something they find really, really challenging and I'm not suggesting that you would pack the bag for months with them but certainly for the first few weeks if you would help them to pack the bag, um, if you could maybe get them to pack it and then you check it with the timetable or the other way around just so they feel confident that they're going in with everything they need because one of the anxieties is, is forgetting things and they're getting red writings and, and that does take a bit of time to get used to. Equipment, um, if you can just make sure they've got everything they need and again there'll be a list in the pack that's been emailed home of, of the things they're likely to need um, and just make sure they've got all that with them and that kind of ties in with packing their bags. Um, routine is a massive one. If, 
if you can get into a good routine from day one, that will be really helpful for them and you. And, and it's just whatever works for your family. So if it works that they come straight home and get their homework done straight away, if that can become their routine so they know homework is important, it has to be done, or if they come home, they have the tea and then do homework, whatever it might be. We also have a homework club after school that runs Monday to Thursday and that's until four o'clock. So that might be something that fits into your routine to help. Um, the planner, as I said before, really important that it's seen and signed every single week. Communication, um, again, particularly for year seven, this is a really important one. Whatever your child might be worried about, even if you think it's something really small, if it bothers them, please just ring me or email me because it will be something we've heard a million times before and I'm more than happy to put their mind at rest. So you can email me, you can call me, you can ring the school, you can talk to their form tutor or you can write a note in, but whatever way you need to communicate, please do that. Um, and the last thing that, that I ask is that they, they get involved with just at least one extracurricular thing because in terms of confidence and friendship building, it, there's nothing better than, than getting involved with extracurricular activities outside of school or at lunch times. It really helps to build friendships. So if you can encourage them to do that, there will be timetables in their forms uh, within a couple of weeks of them starting for sports and performing arts, dance, music, all kinds of different things that they can, they can take part in. Um, this equipment checklist will be in your packs that uh, is going to be emailed home, so I won't go through that. Um, there will be a sheet in there that, that talks about a pack of, um, of things for £20, and that includes things like the maths kit, the scientific calculator, I think there's a pen drive in there, it includes money on their dinner account. Um, so if you want to take part in that, just um, complete the form, um, and we'll, we'll give those to them when they start in September. Okay, so behaviour for learning, I won't go into too much detail now, um, green writings are positive for anything good or kind or helpful that they might do in school. Um, red writings are for negative things, so forgetting things or poor behaviour. And gold writings are for academic, um, academic rewards. Um, so this is the behaviour for learning policy that we'll go through and their form sheet will go through this um, as soon as they meet them. So stage one would just be a verbal warning. If they did something, if they were talking over you or whatever in class, um, you wouldn't get to find that out unless your child was very honest and told you. Stage two, if they had to be spoken to again, would be a red writing in the diary. And so that's when you'd start to see things flagging up in the diary. And that's why it's really important that you check their diary every week. If they had to be spoken to a third time, that would be a lunchtime detention, and that would be with the head of the department that that red writing came from. If they had to be spoken to again, um, not very often, but they would be sent out of the classroom to the head of department, and that would be a stage four, which would be um, an after school detention. And I've never known it to happen, but a stage five would be um, they, they needed to be removed by the senior leadership team and that would be a detention with them after school on Wednesday. Um, and I will hand over it back to Mr Horrocks, thank you very much. So we're nearly at the end of our presentation to you. Um, I know these are very strange circumstances and we're all missing that contact that we would have had with you, but hopefully you found the information that we've given you so far useful. Um, at this point, normally, Mrs Washington would have visited all of the uh, primary schools and gathered uh, all the pastoral information that she would use then to help us put children into forms. Just to reassure you that a form has gone out to the primary schools and we're looking for that information now to come back electronically and we'll be able to act upon it. And I hope really I'm reassuring you there that um, pastoral work at our school is really held in high regard because we think that that lies at the heart of children feeling settled and happy and well in school and then of course they're able to learn and fulfil their academic potential. So just a couple more slides on pastoral support but of course we now start to look forward to Thursday the 3rd of September when under normal circumstances we would be taking in our year sixes to become our new year sevens and we all hope that that will be the case of course. Of course for them they haven't had that normal ending to their year six and all the celebration that goes with that. So they've had that distance from school and, and we know that they'll come 
a little nervous and, and worried about uh, settling into Year 7 at All Hallows, but you can rest assured that we, we will be looking after them. And of course they'll know that on day one when they arrive, there's only 899 working days until they get through to the end of Year 11. And you'll be amazed at how quickly that time passes. So in regard to pastoral support in our school, we believe very, um, very much that children need to be looked after and their, uh, their well-being uh, is paramount to us. So we've invested in a school counsellor here at All Hallows and she'll be introduced to the children when they come and she will pick up on any issues that might need covering when uh, the children are with us. And in addition, we also have Kate, our chaplain, and recently we employed Miss Hindle as a pastoral support assistant to back up the pastoral staff who are already uh, well versed in pastoral support in our school. So that concludes our presentation. We look forward to seeing you all in September. And as Mrs. Washington said before, that communication is key here for us all. So please don't hesitate to also contact me here at school. Um, my details will be in the information that comes out to you. And then we look forward to seeing you in September. Thank you.